my name is Bill Koyakšić. I came from the, uh, let's see, from the Ruzier Boškovic Institute, which is the uh, National Institute for uh, research in uh, all the sciences, uh, chemistry, physics, biology, and medicine. So we have, uh, we have good environment to do many applications. And my field of work is mostly application of uh, ion beam accelerators. You have uh, last week uh, probably several lectures describing ion beam analysis, and also you visited uh, Ljubljana, which is a facility that has very similar capabilities as we have. And uh, you also listened about uh, PIXE, RBS, these classical ion beam analysis techniques. So my, my task was to try to find some special topics in ion beam analysis. And uh, today I will speak to you about the uh, secondary ion mass spectrometry a technique, uh, which is the only one, almost the only one ion beam analysis technique that can anal analyze molecules. So, um, uh, this is the outline of the talk. I'll speak a little bit about ion micropro, but you visited microbeam in, in Ljubljana, so this is quite similar, and I think even they have very similar equipment as we have concerning mass spectrometry. Speak a little bit about interaction of heavy ions of the MeV energy range with material, and about this secondary mass spectrometry. Uh, some um, uh, examples and uh, also some some conclusions and I'll, at the end I will give you some information about the access to accelerator facilities. Okay, uh, so uh, as most of my work is connected with uh, microprobe, so that we are using focus ion beams, I'll just try to re uh, give a few basics of uh, way how the ion beam can be focused to very small dimensions. Uh, normal focusing of charged particles like uh, second, uh, like uh, electron microscope are using solenoid lenses, but unfortunately f to focus uh, MeV ions uh, because of their mass you cannot use solenoid lenses and because of that the only way or the best way to do focusing is using quadrupoles. And uh, if you consider quadrupole, one quadrupole, is actually focusing only in one dimension. So you have to have two quadrupoles, at least two quadrupoles in series in order to get uh, finally focused uh, uh, ion beam. I mean, in all the accelerators, you have a lot of quadrupolar systems that focus the beam for the beam transport system. In the case of micro beam, uh, it is uh, important to have very clean uh, quadrupole field and many other requirements. But basically, if you have some systems, you can, you can put it as some kind of lens, and the performance of the system will be mostly defined by demagnification. So if you have opening of the slits, let's say like a source, you have some square or aperture of, let's say, 100 by 100 microns. If you have demagnification of 100, then after um, uh, this lens at very short range here, you may have 100 times less, uh, uh, less dimensions of the beam. So basically, if you can put current of, let's say, 1 nanoamp or 100 picoamps into this field, all of these uh, ions uh, will come to the very, very small dimensions. Of course, uh, ion beam focusing is uh, very difficult because of many other things that one has to take into, uh, into account. Ion source is uh, important. Uh, uh, of course, the net current is also important. The uh, aberrations of the elements involved are important. Vibrations, misalignment, uh, distances, this, this distance and this distance, so vacuum, and so many different things have to be taken uh, into account. But I will not have time to do much about that, speak about. I'll just give you uh, maybe an uh, example of the uh, uh, traces of the ions that go through the 
system of, let's say, two quadrupoles or three quadrupoles. In the most simple way, you just focus, uh, this is the doublet. So this is uh, just like the, this configuration. Uh, first quadrupole focus the beam. The second one is uh, defocusing. This is X and this is Y. So X and Y. And uh, depending on the ratio between the working distances, you can calculate somehow uh, the, the magnification. In this particular example of very old uh, picture from uh, 30 years ago, um, uh, this was in Heidelberg system, which was very short. But today, if you have doublet, maybe you can use six meters or so. And then you'll have the magnification of the order of 10 to maybe 50. But so far, uh, the Oxford couple triplet seems to be the, the, the best uh, configuration. And uh, most of the microbeams in the world are using this kind of uh, uh, arrangement. Uh, there are certain uh, uh, var varieties of this system that to display this quadrupole a little bit further, and then you can get higher the magnifications. But for a moment, we don't need to go into details of, of the uh, way how this is done. Uh, you just consider that at the end, basically, you have something like one micron uh, focused uh, beam. Uh, one question is the, what we are looking in the picture. It's a triplet made by two okay. lenses, which are not equal. Yeah, uh, this is uh, probably one of the unique examples because uh, uh, two quadrupoles are from Oxford company bought, and uh, the final one is from Melbourne. Uh, the, the reason for that was first that we didn't have money at the beginning, so we bought, bought just two. But one of the important parameters to get high demagnification is this distance. And Oxford lenses cannot be used in this uh, uh, to, to make a very short focus. But the, these Mel lens from Melbourne have a cut pole, so you can go with the detector from the side. But essentially, the important part is the same. So the, the, the distance is 10 centimeters of each. The, different, the, the distance between the poles is the same. So essentially, they look outside different, but they are physically, point of view, the same. And you have uh, only two power sources? Only two power sources, yeah. yeah. Uh, one power source is for this and one for, for that, yeah. So uh, uh, because of this final lens, we have only a working distance of 11 centimeters because we could come with the quadrupole much closer to the center of the chamber, which is spherical. Here you'll see later. Uh, so this is the chamber we have. So this last lens is, uh, is you can even maybe see the conical shape of the, of the chamber so that the pole can come very close to the center of the chamber. But uh, you have seen the, the microbeam, how this uh, actually works. If you have some detector, uh, you collect the, the product of this detector. You connect uh, uh, some certain energy or some certain product with the position, which is uh, determined by the scanner uh, coils. Uh, and uh, by, by data acquisition, you select all the peaks, whatever the detector is, to some images of the property that you're actually looking with the, the, the detector. In this case, this is particularly due extra emission. But any other detector, RBS, gamma ray, whatever you are using, you can, you can create in the same way this, these images. Uh, so, uh, one thing which is when, when you're doing ion beam analysis, you have to try to take all the possible uh, uh, pro, uh, processes into account and try to get the best uh, f uh, about the sample on the basis of the product or on the paper basis of this interaction. So if you look at the uh, stream traces of the ions that go through the material, you, have, you see that the majority of events is ionization. And only very few at the end of the uh, are scattering with nuclei, not, not in terms of nuclear reaction, but just the scattering uh, of uh, uh, atoms together. So they, they are just uh, 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 um, uh, I don't know the, the best word, but they are, they are displaced. Actually, they are displaced for, from the position uh, these green parts are displaced of uh, 
uh, atoms uh, from their original position. So if you look at the end, you have this uh, 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 final green is distribution of defects, which is always at the end of the range. And then you have uh, ionization, and the curve depends really on the energy. In this case, we have oxygen of 4 MeV, so uh, uh, majority of the uh, ionization is quite similar over the depth. If you look at the, let's say, protons, you'll have this break peak at the end, which is similar, close to the uh, break, uh, this uh, damage profile peak. Uh, if you go to the different processes, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, mm, combine them, let's say, uh, all those that, that, that uh, uh, are based on the elastic scattering. You have rather for best scattering and elastic recall detection. So this is, this is elastic scattering of the target uh, ion with the nuclei. If you make ionization, then you can create uh, inner shell ionization and create uh, X-ray spectrometry. Or if you, uh, if you create some nuclear reaction, this is a big end on a nuclear reaction analysis. But there is also one, one technique that relies on the ionization, which is tra scanning transmission ion microscopy. Uh, if, the, uh, if the sample is in some uh, relatively thin, you can, by placing the detector here, you can measure energy loss in, the, in this, uh, this part. I'll tomorrow say something about that. But all these processes are not sensitive to molecular uh, content of the, of the ions. Of course, there are some, some uh, effects in a pixel spectroscopy. The, the X-ray lines are a little bit distorted. There are some uh, fine structure of the K-beta, L-beta lines, and where you can maybe say something about molecular structure. But uh, in terms of analysis of molecules, none of these uh, techniques can, can make this. So uh, uh, I'll go now back to the smaller energies, uh, to the, this energy loss curve, and to this particular part where the nuclear stopping means scattering bit nuclei are the highest. So these are few kV region. Uh, I think that this is some heavy ion like xenon or something like that. And if you look at this part, uh, you, you, uh, 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 what is nuclear stopping means that the primary ion makes a lot of scattering with uh, uh, atoms at the surface layers of the sample. And some of these ions are ejected uh, into the system, into the vacuum. So, but if you make not just one ion, but, but you have beams of heavy, of heavy ions of KV region, you, can, uh, you are making such a huge interaction with the surface that it sputters away part of the sample. So it is like a drill. Uh, it is a, a, a sputtering material from the surface. Uh, unfortunately, in mass, secondary ion mass spectrometry, which is based on this uh, principle, you, you, you create a lot of different ions. So these are not necessary molecules. These are, could be individual atoms. This could be fragments of the molecules. Or in very, very few cases, you can be, they can be molecular ions. And uh, uh, if you look at the system, this secondary uh, ion mass spectrometry uh, seems is a basically tabletop instrument <coughs> with the uh, ion gun. From the side, you have a sample, and then you have spectrometer. Um, you, uh, you, are pull, you are first pulsing the beam over the aperture. You are sending the beam with very well focused to the, to, the, to, the sample, to the sample. And then you have extractor, which is few kilovolts uh, 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 potential that will suck in the ions into the spectrometer. So uh, these ions that are extracted are going to this ion mirror and uh, are send it, reflected to the detector. And once the, you have a pulse from the, uh, from the beam goes through this aperture, the time starts. And the, the, uh, in spectrum, you are having different times when the ion will arrive. So this is time. And as you are going 
further in time, you are having heavier and heavier fragments coming to the detector. The problem is in top space sims that you have a huge amount of peaks. Uh, in some cases, this is a very nice technique. For majority of cases, this is really excellent technique and can, can be used uh, in different applications. But if you're looking at uh, some organic molecule, which is large, bigger molecules, um, you will have, for in this case, this is polyethylene, tetra, some, some organic compound. Only this peak belongs to the whole molecule. All the other peaks belong to the fragments, like this part is green, this uh, orange one is this peak, and all these are different fragments of the molecule. So in order to analyze this spectrum, you really need a lot of experience, a lot of uh, databases uh, 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 and uh, to explain the, the system. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Oops. No, what is that? Sorry. Can you explain about the mechanism of extractor and ion mirror in this part? Okay, uh, 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 so you have, you have short pulse of the beam. Beam goes through the, is scanning through the aperture. So in certain point defined by one nanosecond, let's say you have now ions are going through. When this ion goes through, you hit the target and you extract, you, you eject a lot of atoms from the surface. And then you apply five kilowatts, let's say, uh, negative to attract positive ions, and they, become, they start to fly in this tube. When they come here to the, this uh, mirror, electrostatic mirror, this is probably, so if we have positive ions, it will be positive. They will be reflected to the, to the detector. I will later explain why this is needed. Uh, Let's now consider that we have just detector here. So the start, start probably this is hydrogen. The first, uh, first ion that can, start, that can come will be hydrogen. It's just proton, it will be fastest uh, to come. And then later on comes uh, uh, heavier and fa heavier fragments, which are slower. Uh, so we are measuring, this is time of flight. Uh, and then as they are coming, more peaks are forming, and then you have, uh, of course, repetition many times, many times, hundreds, thousands of times in one second to do so. Uh, so, uh, actually, here is, uh, you are from Lebanon, but the first time, I, uh, I, Bilal Nsuli, you know him, uh, about 1999, uh, uh, proposed to buy a mass spectrometer for accelerator in, in, in Lebanon. I said, oh, come on, why you need mass spectrometer for accelerator? And, uh, but he was right, unfortunately, because of situation in Lebanon, that was never purchased. But that, that was the first idea that I heard about to do mass spectrometer with accelerator. And uh, uh, later on, I'll, I'll explain in the next slide, maybe I can skip to, to oh, no, okay. I will come to that later on. Uh, so what about MEV ions? Can these MEV ions also do the same? So the difference between KEV ions that are sputtering this material and MEV ions is that nuclear stopping is completely low. So the, the probability to scatter whole uh, atoms are very, is very low. But we have extremely high electronic stopping power which means that a lot of ionizations are made. And, and this is big difference, you know, the, uh, this is like every ion will create, uh, let's say, iodine of energy of one MeV per ion, so like, let's say 120 MeVs, iodine, will create 10,000 charge pairs in one, uh, one nanometer. So this is a huge uh, concentration of charge. And this effect can maybe give us uh, some, some uh, way how to uh, ionize the whole molecule. So what is, uh, 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 what is going on? This is, uh, this is a slide about radiation damage in material by ions. But what, what, what I wanted to show is this one. When you have heavy ions going through the material, it creates a lot of ionization. So, uh, 
this is also one kind of uh, artistic image of uh, what is going on when this heavy iron goes through. And one of the first um, application of this you know, property is that if you are going through the, let's say, organic material, you create almost a holes. Uh, so you create a lot of damage in very, very narrow, narrow uh, tube along the way that iron is going through. So this process could be the basis of uh, analysis of masses. So what is going on? The first uh, mass spectrometry based on uh, heavy ions is uh, PDMS, maybe 30 years ago, um, so 74, so even more. Uh, Californium source produce um, a lot of uh, fission fragments with energies of about, let's say, 70 to 100 MeVs. So these are huge energies. And when, when, when these energies come to the sample, uh, ions from the surface, molecular ions from the surface are, are dissolved. And they are again accelerated to the detector. So this is something uh, similar as uh, today technique MeV seems. So uh, now 2009, MEV seems Japan uh, Kyoto University, this was the first accelerator-based uh, uh, mass spectrometer. So in this year, I, I reminded a discussion with Bilal, who had the same idea 10 years before. So that was uh, unfortunately never completed idea, but, but uh, I, I admire him very much because he was very, had excellent idea to make something that later on showed to be quite successful. Anyway, uh, instead of the uh, radioactive source, uh, Yuira Matsuo from Japan used uh, heavy ions for the accelerator, microbeam, the sample, and, and a very simple uh, mass spectrometer. Uh, the same kind of spectrometer we made also in Zagre a few years later, and I'll explain you how this is done in our case. So you have the beam coming from the uh, accelerator. Here are lenses that focus the beam to the sample. Here is the scanner, but in fr here is a beam chopper. Be this beam chopper consists of two deflectors, one in X and one in Y. So what 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 uh, uh, computer control we made the kind of circle that pulses are going through the through the slits. I mean, uh, you have here the slit. You have a deflector. There are another pair of slits here. So the beam is moving in this way. And only every 100 microseconds, you have a pulse of 2 nanoseconds wide. So in 2 nanoseconds, actually, you don't have, enough, you don't have a lot of uh, uh, ions. Uh, if you look at um, this kind of animation or slide that, that if you take that you have here 100 picoamps, uh, 100 picoamps is 100, 620 ions in one microsecond. So which, or maybe if you want to have two nanoseconds, you'll have just one ion per nanosecond. So when, when this beam is scanning over the aperture, basically you'll have one or two or zero ions in a pulse. So, uh, but as this time is very well determined by two nanoseconds, uh, when such a beam go, uh, when, when this moment uh, occurs, we have a start signal for the data acquisition. So this is start is coming from the beam chopper, and a stop will be the ion that will come to microchannel plate detector after extracting and flying all the way to the uh, detector. What's the point of drawing a, a square instead of only going up and down? Uh, okay, yeah. One can, one can do one, one up and down, and this is uh, possible. But uh, uh, as we were having heavy ions, uh, the vacuum in our system was not sufficient. So basically, you have all the time some beam halo. So maybe 1% of ions will go through the, 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 the system in any time. Oh, okay. so, so you have to increase as much as possible deflection in order to get rid of beam halo. Even today, we have problems with beam halo when we decrease. So this is a kind of uh, main, main reason to go as far away as, as possible. Um, so then, then you have this mass spectrometer. You have so the, the, the 
is if you see in our chamber, you have uh, this extractor and then time of light, and here is microchannel plate. So this is this extractor, some lenses, 400 millimeters. So this is flight to the to the uh, uh, microchannel plate. In this case, we don't have this reflection. Uh, another thing which is very important that when you're looking at uh, the the uh, capabilities of MEV sims uh, in terms of analysis uh, uh, of the masses uh, it is uh, uh, quite well positioned uh, for ions between let's say 100 and 1000 maybe a few more thousand uh, KV sims is optimal for very low masses and then there are this small D very very commercial very very used in biomedicine field spectrometer that uh, covers all the very, very heavy, heavy molecules. But the problem of MALDI is that it needs a uh, special kind of samples, uh, sample preparation, um, as it, work, it works with laser, laser light, evaporates part of the sample, and then you, you analyze uh, the masses. But this is destructive technique. And this is also destructive, only this one is almost not destructive because the ions are very, very rare. And another, another point is that the, the efficiency is very high for MEV ions. So uh, molecular yield for this leucine molecule is about 1%, which means that you need 100 ions to get one ion out. And this is extremely uh, very sensitive that, uh, because then in, uh, if you have, let's say, femtoamp current, Femtomp is uh, 6,000 ions per, per, per second. You'll have, let's say, 60 events in one second. And if you remember uh, the pixel currents, uh, picoamps, nanoamps, this is femtomp. So femtomps don't do anything with, with the sample. So the sample is essentially non-destructive technique. So this is our first try uh, by scanning over the, some kind of uh, uh, scene target which was deposited uh, above the grid so there is no sample here uh, uh, and sample is in this region so we made a scan we get the spectra these are different uh, this is a mass of the of the uh, of the molecule you see the, the highest peak is just a clear molecule and these are multiple so two molecules three molecules four and so on and unfortunately, the, the resolution was not that good. It was uh, two by five microns because you have to start with very high current. But nevertheless, we did a lot of different uh, applications. One of them is imagi imaging. For instance, this is imaging. Oh, OK, this, is, this was one uh, cross section of the, of the uh, pigments in, uh, in uh, painting. So you could see different masses uh, that are connected to different uh, uh, areas of the sample. So one can, who, one can find the binders or pigments uh, from one single sample. Another application was that you can you could identify, if you have two inks, so for instance, you have, one, you have one line with one ink, another line with another ink, you can determine which ink is at the surface on the basis of, uh, of analysis of this, uh, see this blue one is over the, over the red one here. Uh, this is one uh, article about this, this application. And then we did a lot of different uh, examples. This is like a finger print, finger, 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 yeah, fingerprint, I think so. Uh, and you can get a lot of different uh, peaks. The problem with the MMV sims is how to identify all this uh, zoo of so many different peaks, which is very difficult to interpret, but there are some possibilities. So this is one, one project that we were doing uh, uh, two, three years ago, uh, is about uh, um, analysis of uh, pigments in modern, uh, uh, modern uh, uh, paint, paints, and these modern paints are often degrading by time, so they were looking for, uh, for what is going on with different kinds of pigments by, by different times. Uh, and what, these, uh, what were uh, some of these uh, pigments were 
uh, okay, this is just identification of different pigments. I will not go into details because this is very difficult to interpret uh, the, the, the chemistry. So you need the chemists uh, bio. We are physicists. We don't really like such a complicated uh, spectra. But okay, we, we found some chemists who are, that are working with. And then we, we made different tests. You can see, for instance, uh, uh, that this yellow paint was uh, aged by uh, UV light for, let's say, two months, four mon months. And uh, so the picture, the, 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 the green color became yellow, blue became to yellow. So they are changing the color. And there, there were some, and you can see that some of the peaks by this aging are becoming bigger. And some of them are becoming smaller. So this indicates persons that are knowing these uh, things, uh, what is going on. Uh, the problem that we have is this better res resolution. So we wanted to find some way that we can improve uh, resolution in terms of uh, spatial dimensions. So then we, we came to one idea that uh, we can use, uh, that we can analyze by Toff Sims uh, technique uh, samples that are very thin. So if we don't pass the beam, but we pass the beam through the sample, to the pin diode, to the detector. This detector can uh, give you a star signal. And then the stop signal will, will give you a microchannel plate. In this way, we obtain much better spatial resolution. It was below one micron. So this, this uh, 0 0.3 mi uh, microns was probably the best, uh, I think, I, that nobody repeated uh, that, that uh, good uh, resolution with uh, MEV SIMS. So you can really come to the point where you can analyze very small, small uh, sample. Uh, and as we are going to these small, small sizes, we try to analyze individual cells. And uh, of course, again, we are, we are physicists. We don't have biologists around. And then we just took uh, from Onion <laughs> uh, school example of the cells. And we try to analyze this sample. And indeed, we could see this is the individual individual cell they were obtained some 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 spectra of some different uh, uh, elements and uh, these are uh, sodium so you can see also that you can make uh, elemental analysis very sensitive elemental analysis this kind of uh, sodium image cannot be done by pixels with such small small current so this is extremely uh, useful for sodium, potassium, and calcium, and so so so. But also proteins uh, can be imaged. The only problem with the molecules is that this uh, that you are not actually analyzing uh, cell inside, but you're analyzing cell uh, membrane because ions don't go through. I mean, they go through, but they will not uh, emit ions. So it. Certain uh, uh, sample preparation will be needed to cut, maybe to freeze down, and then and to make real analysis of the uh, of the cell nucleus. Let's let's say. It's possible. Uh, you are making all the experiment was made at the same time. I mean, with the with the same ions, you made the STEM and the the time of flight. Yeah. Because STEM has an efficiency of one. Yeah. And the time of flight with a line of one meter should have a very low efficiency because most of the ions you are not going to receive it in the... Oh, no, no, no. This 1% efficiency is the efficiency in, in the spectrometer, not emitted. So, the, you know, the 1%. So if you have one, let's say that we have uh, this leucine sample from the before, yeah? Uh, OK, I am now going to have to go too far away. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, uh, so one ion, so we need 100 ions to eject one molecule of leucine that will go into spectrometer. So you know, if you want to uh, get one x-ray from sodium, let's say, you need one million of ions, one billion of ions to go through the sample in order to make ionization. In this case, you need just 100. There are some molecules that you can need only two or three ions that will emit. So this, this is really sensitive. And uh, OK, maybe later I can, I can explain in more details. Anyway, 
This is just possibility that we can analyze uh, single cells, but there are still some disadvantages. Uh, anyway, we try to do also some, some uh, analysis of, of cancer cells with the biologists in our institute. And this will really uh, analyze some, uh, oh, this is cancer cell, and this is single cell uh, sodium, potassium, lipid. Okay, just feasibility study. We don't know much about the, the biology of the system, but basically we prove the proof of concept that we can do analysis of single single molecules. This, yeah. This one. Uh, with these biological samples, how did you uh, prepare the sample? Okay. Was it a sana beam? This is uh, no, no. This is in the vacuum. So we 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 first dried. So th these samples are positioned at very thin uh, silicon nitride foil, very thin foil. They will evaporate, you know, just make dry. And we put it in a vacuum and then analyze. So this is essentially not, not uh, biologists will not do that in that way. Biologists will probably freeze, make a cut, uh, do a lot of chemistry, I don't know, that, and then maybe we can do that. Uh, so this is kind of uh, physics, how physicists look like, uh, simplify the system. But uh, okay, I think pro proof of principle was, was made. And there were also some, some advantages. So uh, another thing which we were uh, trying in our system, you see this is our, our accelerator. The microbeam is here. So at the microbeam, we cannot bend very heavy ions from accelerator to this beam line. So because of that, we try to get the beams of very heavy ions to the central beam line. And on this central beam line, we don't have microprobe, but we have a capillary, capillary focus. So you see there is a needle glass capillary with very small e exit foil. So we can put the beam into this, this space. And uh, by doing this, so this is th that one, uh, we could scan the sample over the over the of the capillary, and we can make images by, uh, uh, from the sample. Why we do that? Because uh, uh, very heavy ions uh, produce even much higher sensitivity, probably one to one, and uh, this is this large LET ions uh, can be used for, for that. And in addition, on this system, we put this reflectron geometry spectrometer. Now I'll try to explain you what, what, what is, why we need the reflection. So this is the chamber. The beam comes from that side, and then it, you have this spectrometer. So ion beam hits the sample. And imagine that you have two molecules of the same weight. But because of the interaction, they may have different energy. They could get energy from the uh, while the cells for the surface. So the faster, the faster iron will go further into the, this this uh, uh, reflectron uh, electrostatic mirror, while the slower particles will, will go uh, shallower. But at the end, uh, by proper adjustments of the geometry and the uh, voltages, both of ions will will come to the same time at the at the end. And what, what this happens, so the, this green peak was the peak from the uh, uh, previous spectrometer where we didn't have this reflection. And now with this new spectrometer in this one peak, we could identify four different masses. So this is much better energy resolution, actually timing resolution. So this spectrometer is uh, very, very useful because it changes by factor of 10 resolution to, to much better. Uh, here is also some another example where we try to uh, compare uh, um, again the problem of a forensic switch um, printing here is at the surface. As you know that if you are working with Pixel, Pixel will integrate almost everything or the part, or, or, and you will not be able to see from Pixel images what is on the top. So we use MEV SIMS, but the problem with MEV SIMS was another one that we again had a, thousands of peaks. So we have a PhD student, Marco Baratz and Catherine Moore. They developed principal component analysis and displayed the different uh, components of this uh, mathematical procedure. 
to uh, different uh, uh, to make images of while scanning of different components, and each component consists of uh, tens of peaks, not just one peak. So in that way, this is this is uh, uh, done much better, and this is just description of the same thing with Pixel. Pixel integrates all the contribution from from all the layers, and you cannot distinguish uh, them, although. There are possibilities in, in, in X-rays like silicon or sodium, which are absorbed uh, because of their low, low energies. And this is the same thing uh, done uh, of two different, two different uh, well, lines or, or from, from the printer. Uh, so you can see in this case, we have the inkjet is this one. This is laser, so this is laser. Uh, jet and this is inkjet uh, line. So obviously, the laser one is at the top. Okay, and these are principal component mass, principal component map. This is not a single element map, but but principal component of of component that take uh, the, both pixel spectra and spectra from from the map sims. Okay, and uh, the same the same uh, problem uh, appears uh, in another project we had. Uh, we tried to collaborate with some uh, biologists uh, to establish can can uh, MEV sims uh, um, indicate uh, uh, when uh, the, 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 when there are better there are better screens. So. Uh, we did a lot of analysis of different blood glucose levels in, in mice, and you have a lot of dif different uh, spectra. Of course, you cannot distinguish anything from these spectra without the computer, so there was, uh, again, some uh, uh, multivariate empirical Bayesian and time series analysis. I never heard about that, but basically a student works on that, and I'll, sh I'll show you the results. So. Uh, these are uh, these, these, this is a graphical presentation of different peaks. This is these, these are different peaks in spectrum. So each of the lines is a different peak. This is control, and this is diseased uh, uh, mice. The problem, the, the the good thing is that that these events in these peaks are uh, predicting. That the, the high glucose level, these are glucose, uh, um, th this is the time, you see. So uh, when, when the mice uh, shows that there is diabetes, these are this, this is this time. But this peak suggested that even before illness developed, you see some, some, some new or some different uh, pattern in, in, uh, um, in uh, peaks. So, this was, I think, one of the first works where actually you could predict that somebody will de develop diabetes. So this is running on uh, research, and, uh, but, but obviously mathematical analysis of all these large number of data is quite, quite important. OK, so these are some conclusions about MEV sims. I will not go, OK, I can try to, oops, what is this? Yeah. So. If you have accelerator, if you have a micro beam, I mean, MEV sims is not very difficult uh, part to add. So one can say that it is cheap relatively, because you, if you look at the MAL, the MEV uh, sims, KV sims, these are half a million or million euro instruments. But if you already have accelerator, I think that this is a very, very good uh, application. Uh, we presented different kind of uh, 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 applications. One of some of them can can be used, and uh, uh, we could also show that we could have very high spatial resolution. So, I think I, I spoke spoken enough about uh, MEV sims. At the end, I will just uh, show you a little bit about our alpha laboratory. So we have two accelerators. Uh, one is small Tandetron, another one is very old, six megavolt tandem. Uh, hopefully, we'll replace it with the new accelerator soon. These are the, the uh, beam lines that we have. And uh, uh, in, from, from the point of view of the whole laboratory, uh, I could say that, that ion beams can provide plenty of unique information and unique samples. So in addition to classical, 
uh, IBA techniques. We have this new MEV SIMS. And uh, also, which will be, I'll speak about that tomorrow about single ion techniques, uh, uh, which you can char characterize uh, charge transport property, crystal structure, density, and so on. And uh, uh, of the final two slides are dedicated. This is our, our, our uh, target room. There has a lot of different uh, uh, chambers. Uh, some of them are pretty unique. One of them is uh, dual beam irradiation stations, stations, as we have two accelerators. We can irradiate sample with two, two beams in the same time. So two of them for fusion materials. We have time of flight ERDA, which is a very, very useful machine, and the capillary microprobe and the, the other microbe here. And uh, today, uh, one of the very important things for accelerators is to have enough users. In our case, we have uh, now, uh, uh, we are part of the Radiate Consortium, so uh, mostly European researchers, but also there are possibility from non-European can, can pr uh, propose the project through this, this uh, Radiate uh, Consortium and get the free beam time in, at our accelerator. And in addition, there is a Central European Research Infrastructure Consortium, which is an um, um, uh, institution uh, uh, based in Trieste, in Synchrotron. And uh, through this CERIC, we can also provide uh, pro uh, 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 beam time. And finally, probably you heard about that, that uh, Atomic Energy Agency is having CRP about access to different accelerators around the world. And we are, we are also part of this uh, CRP. And hopefully, I think we will have the first uh, run through this CRP uh, in November. And uh, well, hopefully this will work going further because I think there is not enough possibilities for people from uh, developing countries where there is not enough facilities. Even if there are accelerators, techniques are different from different laboratories, so you can probably find different labs uh, uh, with different capabilities. And that's, that's our group in Zagreb. Uh, behind the is accelerator, and we are funded by several of the projects uh, of European Union, Atomic Energy Agency, as I said. Yeah, okay, thank you.